Sandy Stanchuk. Thank you. Okay, if anybody doesn't know me by now, my name is Stanley Stanchuk. My wife is the mayor. We uh, have our disagreements after 40 years of marriage. This is not one of them. Um, just to give you a little history and background, I used to work for Joe. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. I appreciate it. Um, I had, I'm graduated from UN in architecture. I have a master in science in urban and regional planning. Uh, I've been doing this for 35 years. I'm old. Uh, let me lean against the wall, hold the building up. Um, you talked about the political climate. Let me, let me address that very directly. Uh, there have been disagreements in the council over a lot of things. This is not one of them. We've met privately. They come to our, when I say meet privately, please don't take that as, I take it into the closet and meet them. It's not what happens. They come to our task force. Meetings, <clears throat> Mr. Dubois has been there. Tim Schaefer has been there. Um, Patrick's been there. Patrick's a good friend of mine, believe it or not, with all the a lot of politics that are going on. Uh, my wife, obviously, then Joan. We have literally convinced most of the council, Mr. Dubois is one of the negative ones, and I'll explain why in a minute, that this has an incredible benefit from a quality of life, from a financial point of view, and <clears throat> developments. It, and let me tell you what Mr. Dubois' comment to me was. Mr. Dubois said, Mr. Dubois, sorry I mispronounced his name, we just call him David, said to me very nicely, I'm a developer. I'm not coming in here unless I get an ROI. Anybody know what that means besides David Singer? Return on investment. Return on investment. I sat there for, what, half hour? And I explained to David what, what an ROI from a government point of view would be. Mr. Singer may not agree, but here's what we presented to him. We have assets as a government and as a private developer. The assets for the government happen to be road, infrastructure, sidewalks, lighting, crosswalks, you name it, <clears throat> anything that has to do with infrastructure. That's our asset. We can either watch it deteriorate, and if any of you have been up and down Franger Road, you know how it's deteriorating. Or we can improve it, we can make something out of it, and we can attract private development with that investment. Ed presented a slide that we worked very hard on, <coughs> and basically it says 19 homes, that area is, uh, about 30 homes in the first three blocks of Franger Road contribute $19,000 in taxes with a mixed-use development, and I'll call it high density if you want that, because as <laughs> the unit density really doesn't impact what we're doing, we make $1.5 million in taxes. That's almost a 20%, 200%? Come on, you're the mathematician. 500% <laughs> increase. We just add the lower in taxes. To say nothing of the population the taxes we get out of gas and everything else. I'm not into finances. I'm into planning, I'm into development, and hopefully we end up with a, a, a really good project. There's nothing that says this is gonna be a success. I'd be the first one to tell you that. City Place failed, David, three times? At least three times? Quite frankly, I was involved in part of it, and I hate saying that, but I was when it failed once or twice. I've been involved in Dayland with uh, Fairfield Development. Um, I'm not a public speaker, by the way, so if I seem a little nervous, I am. Um, this opportunity here is phenomenal. There is no other place in the county where you have two major roads intersecting, bisecting a village, and being able to use it as an opportunity to do development. It's a secondary road, and Joe can address this. Fragile Road is a feeder road. It has incredible potential. Absolutely incredible. If you take the first three blocks, the uh, five acre development, Miami's Children's Hospital, uh, the two parcels that are to the other side, you're looking at $100 million worth of development. Taxes are four more. 
we don't know right now. The financial and the actual impact on the community is incredible. Now, everybody says quality of life. To everybody, it means something different. I'll tell you what it means to me, okay? What it means to me as part of this task force is controlling and guiding commercial residential development, mixed-use development. One of the big issues has been <clears throat> all this development is going to spill into the village. We, as a task force, have gone out of our way to protect the neighborhoods. We have literally buffered it with linear parks, downtown parks, a step development from low scale, medium rise, to relatively 12 story buildings down the FTNI, which by the way, they can build today. I want you everybody to realize that. FTNI basically says you can build eight to 10 story buildings. Nobody knows that. Why? Because FTNI has failed. Why has it failed? And it touched upon it, that they put it in the drawer and they walked away from it. <coughs> It failed because of the old codes and the restrictions that were here. We have a new way of looking at things, and hopefully everybody will come around to this point of view, is that we have assets. We need to develop the assets together. As such, we have what we're gonna call an FFIC, Freeform Incentive Code. I want something from the developer, the developer wants something from me. I'm speaking as a government entity, which I'm not. But. For instance, we want linear parks. We will tell a developer, or ask a developer, or request from a developer, however you want to put it, we want 20 feet of your property. He's going to yell and scream, you just took a million dollars out of my property. David will tell you it's probably more. <laughs> Bottom line is, ROI, return on investments, instead of five stories, maybe we give them six stories. Maybe we give them seven, okay? Depending upon the location. But what it's called is working together to make something come true and actually come up with a functioning, livable downtown. And we think we've started the process correctly. I hope I've answered your question. They are definitely behind this. Uh, they see the benefits from it all the way around. Now, I don't, can't speak for future councils, but I can tell you what's there right now. Any other questions? And with that, I want to say a couple other things. This is a, this is a giant <coughs> jigsaw puzzle. There's a lot of little pieces and a lot of little components that goes in to doing this right. We're not going to get them all right, but we're going to keep trying and, doing, and keep trying and be diligent at it. Even with a city place that went and had difficulties a couple of times, even from the very beginning, it did bring in the tax revenues to the to the city of Palm Beach that it needed to survive. That never that never went away. What happened was that the developer usually and that usually what happened the developer had the issues, the financial issues. But in reality, this is about quality of our lives. We need to have a place to go. We need to have our own vertical shopping centers to go, and not have to go to Alton Road, out on the beach. We need to have a place where we can go and have dinner other than the golden rule on US-1. We need to have places that we can go and have dinners and be a community and have a place that we can gather other than, Coral, other than the Coral Reef Park once a year when we have our picnic. It would be nice to be able to go out to dinner and run into our neighbors. That's what we're trying to do and we're trying to achieve. A byproduct of this is financial security for our village. And I want to touch on one last thing about what Stanley just said. This whole council has endorsed this project. They've endorsed it in video. They've endorsed it by having a vote through the budgetary process. They've endorsed it by being very enthusiastic about it. And we hope that we continue to get their backing all the way through this project. But for that to happen, I have to have the backing of all the village and all the residents, as many as we possibly can. And, and with that, I'm going to ask a question. How many of you all? Think that this is a worthwhile endeavor. I'd like to know that by a show of hands. With that, if there's any other questions, and you might mention your your petition. 
Oh, I do have a petition that if you all, if you haven't signed it, I would appreciate for you to sign it. It's basically to acknowledge that you endorse the future of, of Palmetto Bay and the, and the growth of our downtown. And with that, I want to thank you for your time. I'm going to have 30 seconds, because Ed is a heads down kind of guy. I'm on the task force. I'm part of the marketing effort that we're going to be continuing to push out to all the residents to make sure they hear everything, all sides of what this is going to be. But you can see tonight, we have a nucleus, a very small nucleus of a snowball effect. If you like this idea, you owe it to yourself and your fellow residents in Palmetto Bay to start talking about it. Even if it's up over coffee for 10 seconds. Because this room isn't full enough. We have to have all the ears and eyes of everybody in Palmetto Bay. Um, I will continue to effort to do that, but each of us has our little part that we can do. So please, when you leave here, if you don't sign the, the, uh, the sign up over there, at least go talk to your neighbors, because it's incredibly important, and as long as we have your support, this small nucleus, we can grow it to the entire village very quickly. I'm sorry, there's one other thing I do want to point out, and we've had some comments about our model, okay? That model is so outdated, it's pathetic. It's only two months old, and it's outdated. Why? When we have our task force, meeting, task force meetings, we have people come in, and they have made recommendations. And believe it or not, Ed, I, Mr. Pearson, where are you? Where did he go? Did he leave? Yeah. Oh, damn. Have listened to everybody, and we want everybody's input. They made some major suggestions in regard to linear parks, how we buffer things, the size of buildings, all of which have been taken into effect. And we're actually gonna come up, we hope, with a current model that we can change depending upon what everybody's input is. Um, but please understand that that model, other than the road, which are locked in, is subject to change and all your input. I mean, we're not here doing this in a vacuum. I hope you understand all that. Thank you.